Welcome back to the Sensei Says a Podcast inside my podcast studio in saint julie Quebec, Canada. I hope you're doing amazing. Thank you for choosing the podcast today. And uh, just as a reminder, our mission here at the SSP is to discuss weekly with successful personalities and then dig out some actionable advice. As you could guess through this intro, it is time for our brand new vintage episode. <laughs> which means that I revisit an interview I did uh, during my days on XM satellite radio or commercial uh, radio as well. That's why I'm wearing actually my XM shirt uh, today, proudly representing one of my favorite radio shows of all time, Opie and Anthony. So this week, what I'm um, proposing you is to go back in time, 2006, while I was uh, airing my uh, comedy show on CHIK 98.9 in Quebec City. I had the privilege to meet a lot of my heroes. When they say that you should not meet your heroes. I really disagree because <laughs> this time around I met with one of my favorite bands of all time. The band is Stained. Really was uh, a dream come true uh, for me talking with uh, Aaron and Mike as we uh, obviously see on that picture. <laughs> I'm much too happy to be there and kind of five pounds overweight. If you enjoy this conversation, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share to a fellow metalhead and also leave a review on the Apple podcast machines. Actually, I started playing guitar and, and singing because of you. Wow. I, uh, I put my uh, dysfunction CD in my player and then I, I was like, bam, this is it, man. My show is what was like the shit and spleen so awesome cool. and you could it, you should have heard me uh, sing home in my shower was something. <laughs> but i didn't get to hear that <laughs> <laughs> so uh what about what about um Natina's style between break the cycle and dysfunction from what, what? dysfunction to and break, break the, the cycle? cycle obviously the, the, the titles said something about Natina music sure but what was the idea behind it to go mainstream or? no it was just really about trying to write a better record and take the music somewhere different which we try to do with every record okay try to grow as a band and mature and you know hopefully I, I would, I would kind of yourself. think that that the same change that you saw between dysfunction and break the cycle that you saw that you would have seen also between cycle Break the gray. Cycle and Grey. Yeah. And then the same between 14 Shades of Grey and, and what we're offering to you now. You know, I mean, you got to reinvent yourself every time. Or uh, I don't want to make the same record twice. Do you want me to make the same record twice? No, I don't. I, you know, I, I don't want to repeat myself. Nobody wants to repeat themselves. you get, you got to kind of grow with every mm. record that you make. What happened with... Um with the hardcore style of Steam between the Spin Function and the two following albums, is it like maybe it was, it was take, really take a look just in the mirror from Corn? You, you can hear that Davis is not into his lyrics as he was back in the first four. I think he's into albums. it. He's just singing about different things. Yeah, okay. yeah, you can't sing about the same thing or write the same riff again and again and again. It's just about like we said, a growth process and, and trying not to repeat yourself. I was angrier then. I I, I, okay. I was I was a little bit more distraught with. With, with what my life was at that time and where that was all coming from and and l lyrics and and how I emote myself through what I'm singing always depends on what's going on in my life at that time you know and and I was I was in a much worse place then than I than I have been since wouldn't that be the bad side of uh, the style of music that we enjoy it's like fans will now expect you to be unhappy for the rest of your life so it gives them maybe some hardcore music but i mean i think fans not only you know like aaron said he had to move on but i mean i think fans as they get older too i mean hopefully people will grow with the band and accept you know what we do and uh and want to go on that journey that we're trying to take and you know take it someplace else and maybe someplace just a little bit different than we've been what could we expect from chapter five that we didn't hear on the preceding albums uh you know a lot more textures you know a lot we 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 played around with 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 sounds and 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 stuff <laughs> and and you know just did a lot more than before i mean we took we took a long time to make the record we were you know our our producer was was extremely you know 
uh, he, he's, a, he's a perfectionist and he wanted the absolute best out of you, which sometimes meant more takes than you wanted to do. And, but, but we really, you know, we really made a conscious effort to step it up a notch on this record. How did your uh, professional careers uh, influence your personal career, uh, lives as you made um, albums and sold albums and cash coming in? And well, you and know, the only thing that's really changed for me is the, the, the cash coming in, and that doesn't even happen anymore. <laughs> 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 you know, so, uh, but yeah, I go home and, and I live in this very small rural town that nobody cares who I am and everybody lives up there for the same reason which is to be left alone and to to, to be able to just live a private life and media anal times dinner show I think I'm out on the anal part myself uh, <laughs> <laughs> Disney World I'm on I do the Woodstock okay. and you found planet it's called Zibbers Galag Zigalag it's like a word just made up um, no way really <laughs> I thought that was a real one <laughs> I read that in the dictionary the other day. <laughs> totally. What music celebrity doesn't make the trip with you guys and why? A. Ozzy Osbourne, B. Fred Durst, C. Ashley Simpson. I don't even know what the question is, but I just don't want Ashley Simpson going on a trip with me. So <laughs> <laughs> So if you had to go outer space with a music celebrity, which one wouldn't make the trip? Ozzy, Fred, or Ashley? Ashley! <laughs> She's more a vocal stylist rather than uh, an actual singer, I think. Cool. If you were a superhero, what would your name be and superpowers and why? I don't know, Mike. It'd be Marshmallow Man. <laughs> and why? Uh, Because you would melt in front of a campfire? Yeah, no, then you can make schmores out of me. Kind of forgot that uh, when I met with uh, the bands and personalities back then, I always did my uh, stupid quiz. So that's what you heard or saw uh, at the end. <laughs> so for me, uh, I hope you like the interview, uh, first of all. And for me, it's a huge humility process going through these vintage interviews because uh, I, I always see the growth like as an interviewer and just being too happy <laughs> but I was kind of excited I have to admit uh, meeting with uh, these uh, these people so I, at least I can say that uh, maybe the jokes weren't as efficient but I really enjoyed and appreciated every second I had with these uh, amazing people and let's revisit what we've learned from a stain today in terms of artistic creation and how to stay relevant as an artist throughout and also it's advice that you can apply to your business project to your uh, school work as well to you as an individual number one growth process and it's been surprisingly and not so surprisingly a recurrent theme throughout our guests it always or oftentimes very often comes back to a growth process, putting yourself out of your comfort zone, learning new things, uh, acknowledging new challenges. So it's the same thing in terms of um, being creative, being an artist, being artistically uh, um, proactive, search for novel ways to, uh, to create new tools. Uh, it might be uh, um, metaphorically when I'm speaking about tools, but it could be like physically new tools, say you're uh, a, a guitar player, maybe using a new uh, distortion pedal, maybe to experiment with the echoes or the reverb of a certain uh, room. And if you like um, progressive rock, and I'm, I'm going into weeds here a little bit, but bear with me on this, uh, there's a really, really inspiring tale of competition of creative competition between the Beach Boys, yeah, I said the Beach Boys and the Beatles. And I'm, maybe I'm mistaken here, uh, correct me if I am on my Twitter, at Sensei Pascal, but the two bands were actually uh, in the same recording studio uh, or in proximity while recording um, their albums. And they challenged themselves um, musically like uh, try to seek out new new instruments to experiment with with and try to better themselves and try to see who uh, which band would would, would uh, produce the, the the better the better album between the two that's a really really cool story to to, to read so i uh, i thoroughly suggest you uh, you search on that 
just inquire your Google machine. So again, number one, step out of your comfort zone. It's about growing as a creator, growing as a producer. Number two, experimentation, which I just discussed uh, in number one for like two minutes <laughs> and my big mouth. But in terms of being a content producer, being an artist, it's really just to go above and beyond, think outside of the box, don't have limitations to what you think could produce something great for whatever product or whatever um, artistic discipline you're involved in. And if I, again, take the, um, the uh, example from the Beatles again, uh, they did try a lot of instruments that did not go along with the framework that rock and roll was uh, involving itself uh, in, or limiting itself in, I uh, should say. And that's why uh, the album I, I spoke about, uh, Sgt. Pepper, uh, is deemed like one of the most experimental from the Beatles. And you get that word a lot from a lot of bands. Deftones, again, one of my favorite bands of all time, when they produced White Pony, that was like the prime pitch in their marketing uh, uh, tours and interviews. That was an experimental album for them, which means that they try new riffs, new uh, ways to distort the guitar, new ways to uh, uh, emote uh, Chino Moren Moreno's voice uh, through all kinds of devices. Like if you listen to Elite on White Pony, you'll distinguish like three different voices but from the same singer, right? And to me, they sounded like Transformers, which made it even cooler. <laughs> but again, experiment, think out of the box, push yourself and fail, fail and fail again. That's how you, uh, you will discover something that works. It's by trying everything and anything in between, fail again, do not give up, try something else, evolve through your research process until you find something that works and that is going to make you a distinguishable artist, creator or business person. Number three, emotion dictates creation. By that, what I mean is listening to uh, Aaron and Mike and studying a lot of artists from a plurality of disciplines, uh, you're Creative output is almost like 100% based on the emotion that you have to, uh, to purge. That might be like a derogative, but you, you, get, you get the sense. You have to purge that, that, that emotion like Jackson Pollock, who's a renowned painter. Uh, you, you can feel, you can see the violence, the, the, the force, the strength that he put into, the, into his uh, dripping paintings. I'm going deep now. <laughs> you, get, you get the meaning. If you're feeling happy, it's a super broad example, but if you're feeling happy, chances are you won't scream in a microphone, life sucks, right? <laughs> you're gonna make uh, maybe kind of cheesy songs about dancing and rainbows and butterflies and unicorns, and you're gonna call yourself Usher. <laughs> but emotion dictates creation. And what we should as creators take away from that, I think humbly, is that you have got to stay true, sincere and honest with the emotions you're living, um, the intentions you're gonna put out. Because if you're trying to create something uh, that is not truly you, people will feel that. Uh, it's gonna sound fake, it's gonna look fake if you're a visual artist. There's something, there's a connection there, a truth. You feel connected to the creator because it's honest. You're one-on-one, -on -one. it's the same, you're on the same level. Instead of having a mask on, pretending you're that super angry, uh, person putting things out there, but the end result is not as, as effective because you can feel it's stale, it's, it, it's, it, it doesn't have that same depth, complexity and flavor that, that, that it used to have. So all in all, stay true to yourself and your creations will communicate that much more efficiently. Now, after that long kind of TED talk on artistic creation, what I'd like to know is uh, your opinion about creativity. How do you create? What motivates you? What did you get 
out from this interview, please leave it in the comments on YouTube or reach me out on my Twitter at Sensei Pascal or at Sensei Says Pod. Don't forget that you can always revisit what we've learned through my episode through the show notes, either on YouTube or your favorite audio platform. If you've enjoyed this vintage episode with Stain, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell, share to a friend, and leave a review on Apple Podcasts. You wanna get the episodes fast and first, don't forget to sign up to the free newsletter, senseisays.link slash sign up. I do send it weekly. Plus, you've got some bonus content in there, like inspirational quotes. So go out of your way to sign up. If you did not get enough of the Sensei Says podcast today, and I I understand you, I mean, we're that charming. Go nuts through our archives, either on YouTube or your uh, audio platform. Thank you for watching or listening this week. I will see you back here in my podcast dojo next week. Us Saitos, until then, you are dismissed. It would be nice if every country, or if the music coming from every country was in its native language, each language has its own musical characteristics. You hit me with basic competitive, yeah. I hit you back with entrepreneurial <laughs> right. resilience. And, it's and one-to-one. One. Hitting strong, I like it. Ershan, here's a rope on fire climate. <laughs>